Today I want to talk about the conservative states that are currently passing laws to prevent giving kids information about gay, lesbian, and transgender life, and specifically positive representations. I believe this comes from a panicky idea that since we see more GLBTQ people in the world today, that it must be a queer agenda persuading kids to be queer. And that isn't the case. There were just as many queer folk in the world in the past. Some of you had the Uncle Charlie and his bachelor friend, Freddie. They'd been living together 25 years now, and neither had found the right woman. Yeah, they hadn't found the right woman because they weren't looking, were they? Or maybe it was the Aunt Gretel who rented out the spare room to different ladies over the years, and everyone expected her to become an old spinster. Funny, though, when you visited, that spare bedroom was always full of crafting supplies and never had a bed. Where'd the roommate sleep? On the couch? Come on, let's get real. We know what was going on there. For decades, society pretended that queer folk didn't exist. And when they did see queerness, they ignored or denied reality. It's like the reverse of Santa Claus, where we all know he doesn't exist, but we all play along just to keep up the social convention. Our pretending doesn't make Santa real, nor does pretending that GLBT folk don't exist make them actually not exist. But you know what? Aunt Gretel and Uncles Charlie and Freddy weren't the worst off. At least they were living with somebody they loved, somebody with whom they shared their truth. 30 years ago, I started coming out and exploring. Most I met who were in that same exploratory stage of coming out and coming to terms with themselves. They were in their late 40s and early 50s. And there was a pretty common story that they shared with me. 20, 25 years before then, they were graduating high school. And a lot of them went into the military. And they all told me the same story. I thought the military would fix me. It never did. So when they got out a few years later, they shacked up with somebody and got married as soon as they could, joining their cohort who hadn't tried the military cure. Maybe the service couldn't fix them, but being married surely could, right? Sure, they had kids, careers, families, until they couldn't live the lie anymore. And so there they were, 30 years ago, alongside me, and trying to figure out how to live the life that they had desired their entire lives. These are the GLBT people who you didn't see 30, 40, 50 years ago. They were just invisible. They tried to conform by pretending they were just like everyone else. And maybe you're thinking, well, that's just what the invisible guy in the sky wants. So that's what these kids should do. No. It didn't work and it eventually failed. It was painful, keeping up the illusion of straightness the whole time. And eventually it failed altogether. But the pain wasn't just for us. Think about the partners in those marriages. Think about the wives whose husbands were maybe good providers, but they weren't interested in their wives at all. They never wanted to have sex. Even with a sexy nady on, their husbands would rather go have a night on the town with the guys. Or the guy whose wife was a good mother, and they were good friends, but their relationship never developed that deep, intimate bond that should be there after years of marriage. Nobody caused these people to be gay. They were queer long before the marriage, but they were prevented from coming to terms with their own life and sexuality and gender and ended up causing an ugly situation. And their partners got caught up in the crossfire ending up in a sham marriage or trying to conform to societal pressure. That doesn't mean these sham marriages end without a lot of pain and heartbreak. I know some of you think it's an abomination when you see two young ladies holding hands on a street or two men making googly eyes across the table. But you know what I see? I see two happy couples. I think of the two sham marriages that are not going to happen. I know there are two people out there, well, four really, saved from years of unhappiness in dead-end marriages, saved the pain of those breakups that won't happen and the trouble of divorce and separating. They're saved from wasting years of their life in a broken relationship. So when you see gay, lesbian, and trans folk today, it's not that they're new, not that they've been persuaded by the GLBTQ agenda. It's just that you see us now. We're no longer hiding our lives living out of some misguided mission of conformity that will one day end disastrously and painfully for those we've woven into our disguises. You should think about what could happen if you force us all back into the closet. Do you want your daughter to go through 20 years of a loveless dysfunctional marriage before her husband breaks it off because he's gay? Is 10 years of misery for your son and the heartbreak of his wife leaving because she's found another woman, is that a good price to pay so you can continue the illusion that the world is straight? 
This is the world that existed in the bad old days, 30 years ago. And there were just as many GLBT folks back then. They just weren't as visible. I'm sure sham marriages still happen, but thank goodness there are fewer than before. And thank goodness that GLBTQ people can find happiness and that they are no longer dragging others into sharing the misery of being in the closet. Those of you who think you're doing the world a service by trying to shove queer people back into the closet really need to rethink your strategy. Because it's not only us you are hurting. Think about those who are going to get hurt, possibly your own kids or siblings, when they get entangled with somebody who's just trying to live up to the expectations that you set for them. Thank you for listening. Enjoy your day. And remember to hold the handrail.